Hey guys, my name is Ben Can. Today we're with David Steele, an old friend, and he has one of the craziest properties I've been to. He has so many cars. How many do you even have? That I own myself? Or just that's stored on your property? It's stored on the property. Oh, it's 17 or 18. Yeah, it's crazy. We pulled up and there was just like cars everywhere in the whole block. And I'm like, I think we arrived to the right place. I was out here at seven moving cars, yeah. A lot of shuffling. Yeah, it's a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice problem to have. And again, not, they're not all mine. You know, it's part of the addiction. You haven't really necessarily broken the record for the amount of cars stored here, right? Not even close. <laughs> Do you want to get into the backstory about this whole property and like how many generations of car owners and enthusiasts have lived here? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm car guy number three. The original owner, a guy named Raymond Nelson, he actually commissioned the build of the home in 35 and he moved here with his family from Chicago. And there was an automotive business in their family background in the teens and 20s. And he was a car crazy kid. And believe it or not, in 1935, he had already amassed kind of a small collection of early automobiles and it kind of like fixed them up. And so he moved into this house in 35 with a few cars and immediately started building onto the garage where you're standing right now is the original two car garage. In fact, you're almost standing right on what would have been the back wall originally. And in 38, he went through this wall and built that way. And then in 42, he went through another wall and built all the way to the property line. And then in 56, he built the great big garage that we'll see in a little bit. And he ended up having, you know, 20 some odd, 30 some odd cars here. He was kind of a brassier guy, but he had very serious stuff. Duesenbergs, Cords, Mercers, Stutzes, early Packards, big senior pre-war stuff is what he was into. And back when you could kind of buy that stuff for pennies on the dollar, because who cared, you know? <laughs> so he had a massive collection here and he's responsible for having all these buildings built. He passed away in 74 and his widow, Naomi, had come to know Tom Sparks, who was my friend. And Tom had known Ray Nelson when he was a kid. He looked up to Ray and really admired him. And so when it came time for Naomi to move out of the house, she called Tom and said, all of Ray's cars are here, what am I gonna do? And so he helped sell all the cars off. And then once the place was empty, she said, well, now I'm gonna sell the house. Do you wanna buy the house? And so he bought it in 78, moved all his stuff in here. He kept 48 cars here on the property. It's astounding. Are I you mean, aspiring for that? No. <laughs> to beat that record? I'm absolutely not. No, I don't <laughs> have any interest in that. I mean, I started coming here in 1995 and visiting with him and helping him and doing projects with him. And so I saw him move cars in and out of here. And if there was something in the back corner of the original garage, it would take a full day to get that car out. And I don't have any interest in that. Uh, what I did this morning is plenty. But yeah, he was here from 78 until he passed in 2011. And then I bought the place a couple years later from his daughters kind of moved all my junk in <laughs> just to quickly interrupt the video i just want to let you guys know that i am still selling my shirts at amfilmfest.com i'll leave all the information down below and check it out so do you want to get into a little bit of what you do for a living the american hot rod foundation like i'm like a band wearing my own concert t-shirts so you're referring to the american hot rod foundation which i started working for full-time almost 10 years ago i'm the director of that effort and steve and carol mamishian decided to start finding all the earliest hot rod pioneers that were still around. Small camera crew, go find them, sit them down, interview them and get their stories and capture their stories while we can. You know, guys like Stu Hillborn and Barney Navarro and Ed Pink and all our heroes. We're standing here with Tommy Sparks' old roadster and he was the first guy that ever said those words to me, American Hot Rod Foundation, because the first interview they ever did in 1993 was right here at this garage, actually with Tom and Ray Brown. That's awesome. Well, tell us about this car. I mean, if there's a crown jewel for me anyway, that lives here, it's this, it's Tommy Sparks' old AV8 Roadster pickup. He built this into a hot rod in 42, 43, and kept it his whole life, at least some bit of it. He could never remember how much of it was left because he used parts off of it for other cars. But we know that the body, the front suspension, the axle, the engine that he built at Eddie Meyer Speed Equipment when he was a young guy working there as an engine builder in the 40s. You know, it's an authentic Southern California hot rod that ran the dry lakes. It was at El Mirage in October of 1945 at the first lakes meet after World War II. So it just has great history. And most importantly, you know, he was like a second dad and a mentor to me. So for me to be the caretaker of it and to have had him kind of point at me one day and say, I think you need to end up with my roadster because you won't screw it up. <laughs> Those were his exact words. So it's just the greatest gift in the world. It's just fantastic. I well, love it. I can't think of a better person to be a caretaker with. <laughs> well, 
I'm doing my best. Well, yeah. I guess let's move a little over and let's, let's go to some of your German cars. Okay, we can do that. It's endless here, you guys. <laughs> I see the Porsche bug bit you. A big yellow bug. I feel like in the car world, a lot of people get stuck in their, like, their niche. They're like, I only like hot rods. I only like muscle cars. But like from what I've seen with you, you like everything, which is really cool. I do, and I come by it honestly because my dad was that way. My dad liked sports cars and pre-war classics and muscle cars and all of it. It's just a German hot rod. So what's the story behind this car? It's a good one. You know, the car found me. I wasn't in a position, certainly, to buy one. But a friend of a friend called and said, my aunt is selling her Porsche, and I'm a hot rod guy, and I don't know anything about these, but so-and-so said, you know Porsches. So I called her, went over there, saw the car, heard her story about how she bought it new. She took the original window sticker out of a box and showed it to me, and I was just like, this is never going to happen again, you know? And I called my wife, and I just said, I don't know how we'll I'll ever do this but I think it's a great investment that was one of my pitches to my wife <laughs> I mean she didn't even listen to my pitch all the way through she's like we'll figure it out tell her we'll take it the car looks pristine so the previous owner took really good care of it huh she was a fanatic about it she really was it was her first new car when she got her kind of first good job as, as a young adult it was the first thing she did to treat herself and she and her husband took it on their honeymoon in 1971 they brought their daughter home from the hospital in 1974 so it was like a family member and we just hit it off I mean she's just a great lady and uh, she kept every scrap of paperwork and every manual and receipt and she was a fanatic about it and I just thought it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and I guess I'm gonna join the Porsche world yeah <laughs> the car's a 1970 911T it's a very basic car no sunroof it's a four-speed car which is kind of unusual that was the base transmission it does have S trim and Fuchs wheels and it's got the comfort package and stuff like that but it's a pretty basic straightforward 911 as you would have just seen them driving around LA in the early 70s. I feel like all these cars somehow find you and, you know they've been passed through generations and they end up with you and you're like the caretaker for the next generation. <laughs> the cars that I have all mean something to me beyond just a car like every one of them. I really like it that way and I don't know why it is that way. It just it's something about my personality and what I'm drawn to in a car because there are a million cars that I want to have in the garage. We all have that, but it always has to have a story for me that makes it kind of, there's more emotional involvement than just it's, it's something, it's this piece of machinery that you own. Thank you so much, David, for having us. I love all these cars and your whole property is insane. It just goes on and on and on. And the coolest part is that you just have such a big story behind each car and it's fascinating to hear everything you have to say. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for asking me to do this. It's been super fun, man. You're really a cool guy. <laughs> We're right back at you, man. <laughs>